in committee business. I'm going to go to Ms. Khalid next. Go ahead, Ms. Khalid. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chair. And uh, in my remarks earlier, I had mentioned how important it is for us to, uh, as a committee, combat uh, the, the threat um, and the danger of disinformation campaigns that we've seen, not just the opposition run, but also we've seen foreign actors, foreign state actors uh, take part in, whether it is through funding or to, through the creation of bots, et cetera. So I would propose a motion uh, to add on to the very important study by, by Mr. Vilmir uh, on the state of disinformation uh, in, in our country and what it means to all of us and our safety and security. So I would uh, move that pursuant to Standing Order 1083H, the committee immediately expands its study on misinformation and disinformation while focusing on foreign interference and domestic deception to investigate A, the devastating impact of malicious, artificially generated online bots used by foreign and domestic actors. This includes Russia's propaganda machine to manipulate the public discourse and fake bot accounts claiming to have attended a rally held by the leader of the official opposition, Pierre Polyev, on July 31st, 2024. B, Russian disinformation sites hosting Canadian political content. C, recent reports suggesting India may be using social media bots to interfere and wage an information war against Canada to influence the upcoming Canadian elections that the committee immediately devotes the next three meetings to these critical matters and invite relevant witnesses to provide expert testimony on these subject matters. The committee shall then report its findings and recommendations to the House. And Chair, I'll say a few words to, to this motion. I think the testimony that just, we have heard- Just hang on, Ms. Khalid. Mm -hmm. Every, everybody should have a copy of the motion C'était envoyé par uh, les Gafriers en avant de, uh, de notre séance aujourd'hui. Go ahead, Ms. Khalid. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, I do believe that it was circulated uh, earlier. Uh, thank you. Um, so, as, as I was saying, uh, through the study that we had initiated on social media and their practices with respect to privacy, with online safety and security, and then moving on to the misinformation and disinformation study, knowing and understanding how technologies can impact and sway public opinion and having watched it in real time, whether it was uh, you know, in 2016 uh, through the Trump election or, uh, or currently with Timber Trump, uh, you know, we're, we're really trying very hard to ensure that Canada and Canadian democracy is protected. And I think that the overall study is very, very important in order for us to understand what the dangers are, to outline what our government can do to ensure that we are protecting and safeguarding not only Canadians individually, but our entire democratic institutions. Quite frankly, I have seen over the summer, as I outlined earlier, too many people making all kinds of outrageous claims that are absolute lies. And with the public influence that they are able to wield, it has negative connotations. And these media reports with respect to whether it is um, fake Russian bots being bought out by the conservatives or other parties, uh, or it's misinformation campaigns being paid for by the government of India, for example, as, are, as is alleged in, in news, article, news articles, or it's uh, Russian misinformation sites that are being seized because of their disinformation being spread about Canadian politics. Chair, our democracy is under attack. And if we keep on squabbling amongst each other, we are going to lose the very essence of who we are as Canadians, and that is a democratic state. 
And I think that it is of the utmost importance for our committee to pick up this very important issue and say, you know what? Let's put all of our partisan politics aside. Let's see how we can work together to ensure that disinformation does not become a tool for toppling down our beautiful democracy that is Canada. So Chair, I'll, I'll park my comments there and I'm hoping that members uh, all across the aisle can support, uh, support this um, because of the gravity of it and the importance of it with respect to maintaining our democratic values here in Canada. Thanks, Chair. Okay, so uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Khalid. Uh, Mr. Barrett, go ahead, please. Well, thanks very much, Chair. I want to share with the committee um, an example of real-life disinformation, and uh, it's been propagated by Ms. Khalid and, and her colleagues. Disinformation while talking about disinformation. And so I'm going to, I'm going to share from a, a Canadian press story from August 28, 2024, and it deals exactly with uh, some of the contents of the motion and, and what Ms. Klee's been talking about before. And it reads, there is no evidence that indicates the federal conservatives were behind a bot network on social media that praised a Pierre Polyev rally, a new study has found. The Canadian Digital Media Research Network launched an investigation after hundreds of X accounts uh, posted about the conservative leader's July rally in Kirkland Lake, Ontario, all using the same language with phrases like buzzing with energy and as a Northern Ontarian. The fact that the posts were so similar immediately raised questions about who was behind the network of bots with the NDP and Liberals pointing the fingers at Conservatives, Conservatives, the Conservative Party denied having any involvement. Results from the investigation were published on Wednesday. It, and I'll quote, despite this significant speculation associated uh, accusations, we find no evidence that indicates a political party or foreign entity employed this bot network for political purpose, said Angus Bridgman, director of the Media Ecosystem Observatory and a contributor of the report. Instead, the researcher said they believe it was an amateur experimenting with a bot pipeline by sourcing content from news stories and the Polyv event was caught in the mix. The rally had been reported uh, on in mainstream media in the days leading up to the mass post. This is not done with intent to manipulate, it's with intent to experiment, Bridgman said. Very few Canadians saw original bot posts in the report, said their impact was considered to be insignificant, but Bridgman said the narrative about bots was hijacked. The follow-up conversation about the post ended up getting millions of views on X and millions more through ampli amplification by media, the report show. Many of those posts attacked the Conservative Party and Polyev for attempting to mislead Canadians about his popularity. Now, um, it says... Uh, it says Liberal MP Mark Garrison too pointed the finger at the Tories claiming without evidence that the Conservative Party of Canada purchased the bots on social media. Ultimately nearly half of the Canadians who heard about the bots believed a political party was to blame with a vast majority of them thinking it was the actions of the Conservatives. Bridgman described the political discourse around the bot campaign as toxic and said it should serve as a lesson for future Canadian elections. And this quote's really important here. The finger pointing without evidence is actually quite destructive and leans into the hyperpartisan, hyperpolarized information ecosystem that we find ourselves in today in Canada. End quote. So, so here we have here we have the Liberal MPs who are talking about disinformation, actually propagating it. That. They actually spread disinformation, and the the false claim that they made was disproven by experts. And it went on to say, the, the report says that it's because of, only because of their disinformation campaign that the effect of these bots was amplified. Hook, line, and sinker. So Ms. Khalid said that she wants to put partisan politics aside, but they've put them in the shop window. They've put them to the forefront. We heard her say, quote, we're better than this. No, the, they're, they're actually not. They, they're, they're actually not. They actually are called out for spreading disinformation. And let me tell you, I'm, I have a few minor amendments to the motion, but we think that this is an excellent study. We think it's, it's terrific. I think that there's some great witnesses who are listed in this Canadian press report. And 
Uh, we think that the impact of foreign interference in our democracy is uh, it's troubling. We think that uh, irrespective of the country, any foreign meddling in our democracy is unacceptable. And that's why we've had to drag the Liberals kicking and screaming to implement legislation like Bill C-70. Foreign interference or a foreign agent registry, my goodness, yeah. it, it was, it was worse than pulling teeth to try and get the Liberals to do it. And like many such cases, we, we needed the FBI, we needed the FBI to tell Canadians what these Liberals denied and actually the public safety minister, a minister in the Liber Trudeau's Liberal government, lied about Beijing-operated Chinese police stations in Canada. He lied about it. But the FBI, again, that's, that's disinformation. Point misinformation. of order, Mr. Chair. Point of order. You can't say that a member has lied. You can't uh, say uh, that. I don't think he accused a member. Yes, I he didn't. did. Th no, I think he was just talking Stop in general. Do protest too much, Gen Mr. Fisher? Generalities. Okay, uh, go ahead. You, you know the language you can use and Absolutely. not use. Go ahead, Mr. For the for the kids, for the kids, we're bringing in Shakespeare as as we as we talk about the disinformation spread by the Liberal government, and we saw it, and that's a that's a great example, and uh, and we're lucky to live next door uh, to our friends in the United States because they've provided great cover to the incompetence of these Liberals. Uh, on, on matters of uh, terrorism and on matters of foreign interference. We're so fortunate that they brought it to light for Canadians because it would have died in darkness with Ms. Khalid and her colleagues. So it's, uh, w we look very forward to more information about the effects of misinformation. It would be interesting to get, you know, some of the people cited in the article, not just the, the authors, but those who, sp who intentionally and without evidence spread false information. Like that's, that's a damning indictment, a damning indictment of, of this Liberal government after their, their nine years. And they're unapologetic about it. And, uh, and, and so, you know, Ms. Khalid talked about wanting to strip partisan politics out of it. Uh, I have an amendment that, that looks to achieve uh, some of that. And I also have an amendment that looks to solve for some of the scheduling uh, challenges that it creates. Um, but the quantity of the meetings is, is of no issue and, the, uh, and the, the broad substance of the subject uh, is important. But um, my goodness, my goodness, when we, when we look at the ineptitude and failures of the Liberal government, on, on foreign interference and their intentional spreading of disinformation and amplification of disinformation, we, we know that, uh, that they should be uh, more concerned about exposition potentially than, than foreign governments because uh, I think that we have uh, domestic interference or, or domestic deception is, uh, is, is, a, is a giant problem with these Liberals who also want to seek, of course, to censor what Canadians see on the internet. So they create the disinformation, uh, limit the channels or, or the way that Canadians can, can receive it, and then say that anything that's offside with their narrative um, is a lie, when in fact, when in fact we've seen countless examples that these Liberals um, are in fact the, uh, the perpetrators of the very thing that they claim to detest. So. Um, it's it's uh, um, it's very timely that we're going to deal that we're going to deal with this. Uh, so I think that that's uh, that's important that we do it.